Roswell flight test crew. Roswell. Like where the flying saucer, flying saucer, flying saucer crashed in 1947? Is there anybody out there who can explain to me how that has anything to do with drones? Anybody? A anybody? Here today to take a look at the X-Star Premium from Autel Robotics. To keep up with the latest on drones, click subscribe now before you forget or change your mind. If you get the X-Star Premium, which is the upgraded model, it comes in this rugged looking case. With other drones, you also get a free case, but this one looks like a legitimate storage and transport solution. It's really tough and well made. So let's find out what's inside. Ooh. So the first thing you notice is the International Safety Orange quadcopter. Autel also makes a white one, but orange is the color for me. So my first impression is that it feels really sturdy. Heavier than I would expect, but in a good way, like a serious piece of equipment. So taking a closer look, we've got a fixed undercarriage, LED lights on each limb for orientation, an optical flow sensor package for low altitude position hold, and a micro USB port for connecting your computer. Underneath the aircraft, we've got a 4K video camera mounted on a three axis gimbal. I've heard very good things about this camera from reliable sources, so I'm excited to get it out in the field. Over here, we have another micro USB port for interfacing with the camera as well as a micro SD slot with a card already installed. Let's see what they gave us. SanDisk, 64 gigabytes, sweet. Next up, we've got the radio, and it feels pretty good in the hand. That's easy for him to say, he's got hands. On top, we've got this clamp to hold your smart device, and if you want to use a larger device, it rotates to hold it horizontally. One thing I like a lot about this controller is that it includes this small screen which provides basic flight information. It's a very useful backup if your smart device goes offline. Below that, we have the control sticks, which are configured for mode two. And then we have these five buttons. Right in the middle is the power button. Press and hold for two seconds to power up the controller. You can use this button to start the motors spinning. You can also pull the sticks in and down to the center or out to the lower corners to start the motors. This is the auto takeoff, auto land button. Or if, if, if you're old school, you can just push up on the throttle. I'm just saying. Press and hold this button to engage return to home. Although this only works if you've got a good GPS lock. This is the pause button. I can't imagine experienced pilots will get much use out of it, but it could be a real help for beginners. Press it and the aircraft stops maneuvering and hovers in place. Just because you've got a pause button doesn't mean you've got time to go to the fridge for a frosty li li libation. On the bottom, we have a plug for charging the controller. Across the shoulders of the radio, we've got two switches and two knobs. This one controls the pitch angle of the camera, looking up or down. This switch controls flight mode. GPS is in the center. Attitude mode is if you shift it towards the middle of the radio. This disables GPS and is intended for when you're flying indoors or some other location with poor GPS reception. Switching it to the outside enables intelligent orientation control. By the way, you don't actually actually get to call yourself a drone pilot, a drone pilot, until you learn to fly with, with, without using intelligent orientation control. I'm sorry. Those are the rules. On the other side, we've got a play button which will allow you to play back previously recorded video on your smart device. You can do that. And you can also drive a car wearing a blindfold. That's not a good idea. Wait until your drone is back on the ground b b b b before you start watching your videos. And then this knob is used to make adjustments to advanced camera settings, like ISO and shutter speed. Across the back, we've got buttons to stop and start video recording and take stills. You've also got a USB port for connecting to your smart device, a micro USB port, and a trainer port. The trainer port allows a more experienced pilot with a second controller to take over from a beginning pilot if something goes wrong. The left antenna uses 5.8 gigahertz to transmit aircraft commands and receive telemetry. 
and on the XSTAR Premium, both antennas receive the HD video signal on 900 MHz. When you're flying, the antennas should be upright and parallel to each other. All right, let's see what we've got in this box. In here, we've got a neck strap, an A to micro B USB cable, spare parts for the gimbal, spare landing feet, and a prop wrench. And in this pouch, looks like we've got propellers, eight in all, or two full sets. And next we have a charging gear for your controller and your aircraft battery. And looks like we've got some paperwork. This one is particularly important. It's got the serial numbers for all of your individual components, plus contact information for Altel's support team. They're located just up the road from us in Seattle. Know before you fly. Be sure to take a close look at this if you're a new pilot. A packing list, which tells you everything that should be in the box, a quick start guide, and an in-depth user's manual, with a sheet of stickers hiding inside. <gasps> stickers? I love, love, love stickers. First, let's get the batteries charging so we're ready to go when we're done with the setup. Connect the charger to an AC power source, then connect the battery and the controller. Lights indicate the charging status. Safety first! Only charge batteries in fire resistant fire res fire, res fire resistant container containers. Or make sure your homeowner's insurance is paid up and keep the fire department fire department on speed dial. Now we're ready to download the app. It's called Starlink and it's available for Android and iOS devices. Star 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 Starlink is also the name of an app for people who drive Subarus. So make sure you download the right one. Unless you drive a Subaru, then you should probably download Bose. Starlink app. Subaru drivers. Right one. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. It's a free download. Click to install. Now we're ready to prepare the aircraft for flight. Remove the gimbal holder from the gimbal. Do not power up with this in place or you risk damaging it. If we were actually going to go flying, we would attach the propellers. We're indoors, so that's not a good idea, but here's the procedure. Notice that two of the four propeller shafts have red dots in the center of them, and two are black. Mount the propeller with the corresponding color on its hub. Now we can go ahead and power up the controller. Ensure that the mode switch is set for GPS, then mount and connect your smart device. Next, power up the aircraft. Here, we can see where this little built-in screen is already paying dividends, letting you know exactly what's happening. The orientation lights are providing us some of this same information. The ones in front are always red, so that you know which way the aircraft is facing. Right now, the ones in the back are yellow, because we're in attitude mode. Green would indicate GPS lock, and a flashing red would indicate low battery state. Next, click on Start and you'll get an overview of the aircraft status. Close that and we're on to the main interface. Notice there is some latency in the video signal. I'm sure this is going to be fine for general purpose aerial video, but I wouldn't recommend it for precision flying. Latency, latency. matters because the tree you see coming up fast coming up fast on your monitor. Fast on your monitor is the tree you've already hit in real life. In real life. Down the left-hand side of the screen, we have the aircraft controls. Fly enables intelligent flight modes, including orbit, follow me, and waypoint navigation. These two buttons duplicate the auto takeoff, auto land, and return to home buttons on the controller. And this button allows you to set a new home point for the aircraft, either where you are or at its current location. Across the top, we have your flight instruments, distance to home, altitude, current speed, heading indicator, flying time remaining, aircraft battery charge remaining, and this indicates whether or not your optical flow sensor is working, typically when you're close to the ground. Down the right side, you have your camera controls, including the current settings, gimbal pitch indicator, video and still capture, and camera settings. Across the bottom, we have a mini map, a settings button, where you can check and configure different aspects of the system, an overall status indicator, flight mode indicator, and current GPS signal strength indicator. 
Okay, let's put everything back in the box and go flying. Before we fly, we have to calibrate the compass. It's a good idea to do this whenever you change locations. Let's say you go across the country or you get a brand new box. Calibrate because it'll fly a lot better, a lot safer that way. When calibrating the compass, make sure to remove any metal objects from your person. Also, step away from cars, fences, anything that's a metal around you, because that'll interfere with the compass calibration procedure. To calibrate the aircraft with the props off, press the little gear button in the software, press compass calibration, and then calibrate. On the aircraft, you have flashing yellow lights. Rotate the aircraft until the lights turn green flashing. Okay, I think we got that now. Then nose down. And then rotate the aircraft until they go solid green. I'm, I'm, I'm getting dizzy just wa 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 watching. Back on the software says calibration succeeded. Now the calibration is done, let's put the props on and go flying. So the aircraft starts in beginner mode. Now what that is is a a mode where it limits your maximum speed of the aircraft, also limits your maximum height and your maximum distance from, well, you actually. So pretty cool. As far as I can tell, the inputs are still pretty aggressive, but I can yaw just fine. I can tip the aircraft back and forth nice and fast, but the second I tell it to go somewhere, it slows down a bit after it achieves its maximum speed which actually is pretty nice, it flies well. Some aircraft in like a beginner mode tend to make it feel squishy, kind of hard to control. This one's very easy to control, still very, very responsive. I'm actually very happy with that because nothing like having an aircraft which is just responding slowly if you need it to go faster all of a sudden. Well, according to the screen here, I can't change modes while flying. So I'll land it real quick and then observe how it flies normally. change modes, go to the gear icon and uncheck the beginner mode. At that point you'll have other options like horizontal speed, you can set your altitude limits if you want to, but I'm going to leave this alone for the moment. My thoughts about how this aircraft flies, it flies really good. A few little things of note, uh, for example in forward flight, if you tip it left and right, it doesn't respond real good to that, but it flies really good forward. It wants, if you slow down a bit, it turns like a champ. Like going full speed it tends to want to kind of yeah, drag on forward a bit, so be careful of that. The yaw authority is excellent. Also, the ability to drop, it, it, it falls fast, and I actually like that a lot because sometimes you want to get a good camera angle, you want to get the aircraft somewhere quick, and you can do that without kind of waiting for it to fall. Now, I flew beginner mode, and it falls a little bit slower, although it ascends quickly, though. So beginner mode, you have your full ascent, but reduced rate of fall, which is actually pretty good for a beginner, because, you know, they tend to put the sticks at the very bottom to make it go down, and that makes sense. Just sitting in place, it's decent, giving it a bit of forward input. It tends to, to handle it nicely. It just turns a nice little pirouette, little circle there. One of my favorite features, actually, something I don't see in many aircraft that have GPS hold. When you let go of those sticks, it kind of glides to a stop. It doesn't just flail and just stop the aircraft, which I find personally very, very annoying. It, it slows down, but gradually. So that's smart logic. I really like that a lot. They thought this out a bit. Also, you know what? That color is so easy to be to spot against the trees, against the sky, everywhere. That's a bright color in the sun. And I've never lost the aircraft, not even for a second. I know right where it is. I just want to take a minute and show you some of the autonomous functions, beginning with the automatic takeoff and auto land feature. To tell you the truth, I was very skeptical of this. I'm an experienced drone pilot. I know how to launch and recover my own aircraft. But after playing with this thing for a little while, I found myself relying on it more and more because it is really convenient. You just press it and away you go. Another thing this does is give me the opportunity to point out how well this cool little screen works. Notice on the little screen built into the radio, as you press and hold one of these commands, you actually get this progress bar that shows you how long until it commits. It's one of the small little details that I really like about this aircraft. One thing to be aware of is if you ever see your screen turn to black and white while you're flying, that means you've lost your video link. Next, we're gonna give you a sample of the aerial video this bird makes.
Next, we're gonna put the gimbal through its paces with a torture test. The footage you're about to see has not been approved by the American Society for the Prevention of Cruel Cruelty to Gimbals. Finally, we have our aircraft endurance test. We started with a fully charged battery and then landed it when it got down to 20% indicated on the screen. So that was our look at the X-Star Premium from Autel Robotics. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe. Did you ever ask yourself, where, 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 are, they, where are they going? Exactly. exactly. What's over there that's so much more interesting than you? You. is that you can quickly remove the gimbal to attach other types of sensors, which is nice because it makes it kind of future-proof. One of the details that's getting a lot of attention for this aircraft is you can quickly remove the gimbal. Quickly <laughs> remove the gimbal? Another thing this does is give me the opportunity to point out how well this cool little screen works. You notice She waved. <laughs> Let me say this.